Have you seen Dahlia? Yeah, listen, Frank. If you know where she is, tell me. She's supposed to be upstairs at the diner. She's not there. I want to check up on her, and I'm afraid that she has run away. Look, hold on a second, Frank. She didn't run away. She's upstairs in my bedroom. Wait, hold, hold on a second, Frank. Okay, honey, now, I don't want you to be nervous, all right? You've had a sonogram before, and this follow-up is just going to be a piece of cake. Yeah, well, it's just that what if something's wrong? How can I chase this worry away? We did have a little scare last week, but we found out it was normal. Nothing has happened since then. You're fine. The bull on so they can prove old dad right. Oh, hi. Oh, hi, You're Margaret. Here. Yes. Good. We're all ready for you. Yeah, we're a little early. Ross is anxious. No, I'm not anxious. I'm just excited. And, well, I should be. Today, I get to see my sons for the first time. Oh, now, look what Lizzie's at me. It's an original. <laughs> my, my, we have an artist in the family. Yes? Oh, this is good. Good? She's five. <laughs> yes. She's five. This is brilliant. <laughs> of course. A little biased. And she does have very talented parents. <laughs> course, exceptional. They say that, that, that children's paintings speak volumes. Now, this one tells me that. Well, she misses her daddy. Of course, her whole life must have been disrupted. You're being away so long, huh? Best too, right? Oh, I don't know about that. I think they're both so busy, they don't even know I'm gone. Does your wife understand why you're here? Sure. Beth understands everything. Mm-hmm. Well, I'm sure you have a very good reason for being away from them so long, darling. It's got to be hard on you, too, huh? It's killing me. If I, if I didn't have so much wonderful family here, it would be practically unbearable. Mm-hmm. Well, still and all, darling. If I were Beth, I think I would think it's... Well, just myth me slightly that you were staying away quite... Nah, you know how Beth is. She's tough. She takes everything in stride. Yeah. Oh, excuse me. Hello, Alexander Spalding here. Yes, well, what a nice surprise, dear. Yes, of course, he's standing right here. <laughs> it's for you. It's your wife. No, no, no. Very, very close. Very close. Oh, come on now. Just take a deep breath. What do you smell? Fish. Fish. Lots of fish, okay? I want you to look right up there. Red rising star. Look at her. I don't believe it. After the storm and everything she went through, she looks amazing. Yeah, the marine engineer said that she's all patched up, tight as a drum, ready to set sail anytime we want to. Oh, well, that's really nice, but you know what? I think I'm going to stick to the water in the tub in the shower. No, no, but there's like at least two or three of them on the yacht, sweetheart. Oh, uh, yeah, and? So? Well, so, I mean, we, uh, we don't live at my father's house anymore, and technically we are homeless, so I thought that maybe we just, if we stayed uh, in port... We would live on the yacht. Just until we find the home that we both love. Come on, mate, what do you think? You think you can live on a star? Take it upstairs. No, 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 you take it right here, darling. Please, please. I was leaving sure. anyway. Of course, of course. Okay. You see there? Hey, you read my mind. I was going to call you this afternoon. Yes, really. I miss you. I miss hearing your... Well... Honey, I'm sorry. I'm sorry that your mom keeps calling you and asking you all these questions, and... Uh, I don't know. I don't know what you should tell her. 
Look, I know this is hard on you. And no, I'm not angry. I just, it's frustrating. But you know why I'm here, and you know what I'm trying to do. You know, you don't have to stay in Arizona. Why don't you come here? I would love it if you would come here. I miss you. Well, you know, I'm sorry you feel that way. I, I don't know what to tell you, Beth. You know why I'm here, and you know what I'm trying to do. And I'm not going to leave until it's done. Come on, look, I know you want that little house of your own. Yeah, like we talked about. Yes, complete with a big bay window so that you can look at your vegetable garden and you can see our kids, you know, mm -hmm. the swinging in the swings and everything. I like the way that sounds. Yeah, well, it completes the whole picture, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. the little Cooper's bawling children, you know, playing tag together. On dry land. <laughs> Lucy, it's just going to take a little while to find exactly what we want. Well, maybe we could stay at Frank and Elaine. Buzz and Reva? Even better. Okay, a hotel. Come on, Lucy, would you really like that? No. No, no. My point is, we don't have to rush into anything. And meanwhile, Star has everything that we need. Well, good address. But you're not completely convinced of the idea. Oh, Michael, it's just... I almost lost you on that yacht. If it hadn't been for that man, Zachary, I would have. Yeah, well, a lot of things happened before that storm blew up, right? I think they called it a honeymoon. That's true. And that was happening. Yeah, and I'd like to get back to that. I'd like to be able to lay out on the deck with you, you know, in the sun, and the moon. Love every night? And every day. <laughs> You've really thought about this. Lucy, we got through an entire storm only to come back into one, you know, between your father and my father, them both going at each other. I know, I know. I just want to get back to you and me and some of what we had on our honeymoon. All right. All I need is you anyway. Yeah. And you're still a bride. I want to remind you why you married me. <laughs> Oh, they're gone. aren't they? Really? Got I don't know. Someone must have scared them. Did you do this to her? You back up and stop sweating me for a second, Frank. I get a hey, 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 You can take advantage of an innocent girl. Give me a chance, then. Hand First of all, try to defend him, Noah. I'm not defending him. Somebody's going to make him think twice about what he's doing to he Dahlia. He saved her life. Is that, is that what he told you? Yes, that's what he did. He saved her life, her body, her soul, everything. What kind of fool are you dishing out? He saved her, Frank. Saved her from what? Tell him, Marcus. No, I don't really want to tie. No, that's what no, they want to anyway. tell him the whole thing. It's called rape, Frank. <laughs> You're telling me she was raped? It didn't happen. The guy tried. He found her in an alley and stopped it. Is that true? How could this happen? When did it happen? Where? It started in a bar. A bar? Dolly doesn't go to bars. She's, she's not old enough to drink. I don't believe a word he's saying. This, this, this is too lame. Wait a minute, wait a minute. She's a good kid. She would never do something she like this. She wasn't dressed like a good kid when she went to this bar. Well, look, the details aren't important here. What's important is that she's here and that she's safe. I mean, who knows what she was thinking when she was doing this? Wait, 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 what, 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 what am I missing here? She didn't go to the bar to drink. She went to look. It turns out that it was her mom's favorite hangout. Oh, what, that dive that Tina used to work out of? Yeah. Does that answer any of your questions? No, no, I need you to keep telling me. She didn't just go to her mom's favorite hangout, Frank. She went dressed like her as well. She dressed like a hooker. That's what she did. Well, she, she went what she thought a pro looks like. Look, I mean, she, she went to look, and by the time she got there and realized what was going on and where she was, she got scared. She changed her mind, and she tried to leave, but this guy wouldn't let her leave, and I guess he finally hustles her out into the alley, and that's when I showed up. Oh. And now you think you're some kind of big hero, right? Well, you're not. Frank, that's not fair. He... She never would have gone into that bar if he hadn't opened his mouth. You're right, Frank. I made a mistake. The biggest mistake of your life. But you know what? It's not your life. It's Dahlia's. Look, if I could take this back, Frank, I would. I'm sorry. You're sorry? Don't you think it's a little late for that? 
I mean, look, I, I can't possibly make this decision without you guys. Dad, I'm fine with it, but it's your life. I mean, I need you to be honest with me now. You've had enough time to think about it since I brought it up. I mean, what? I mean, do you hate the idea? No, no, not if this is something that you want to do. I know it's what he would want you to do, Dad. And what about you? What do you say, Rick? Oh, thanks. Personally, Dad, I would jump at an opportunity to participate in that program. <laughs> well, see, that would have made sense, you know, if they'd asked you to do it. But they didn't, Dad. They asked the right person for the job. So what? You're saying you think I should do it? As one doctor to another doctor, yeah. But as your son, who's finally getting a chance to work side by side with his dad again, that's that's a tougher call. You know. I mean, you're going to be on the other side of the world. Well, they have phones there, don't they? We could email you. Yes, you could. I mean, if I knew what it was, you could do it. Do yeah, it. She's just showing off. You know how she gets. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, now, come on, I could call up Johns Hopkins right now, and I can, I can call the whole thing off. No, Dad, I'm saying go for it. Sweetie, I need to hear you say it. I can't believe I'm saying this, but I miss you. <laughs> I can't believe you're saying it either. It'll be weird not to see you looking at your watch every time I come in the door. Weird not having you ask me if I finished my homework and telling me not to drive the car too fast and oh, asking me if I've got eye makeup on. Enough, enough. It hasn't been that bad. It's just, it's just weird. After Mom died, then Eve, I just never thought you'd go anywhere. Then I won't go. That's not what I'm saying. You? Not really, no. I mean, I think it has something to do with the fact that you think I want you to dress like a nun. You think that I never want you to leave the house unless you're going to the uh, hospital. I'm just, and your I'm just mad around. because I think you're trying to stop me from being me. I've lost a lot lately. I didn't want to lose my little girl. But you won't. Not if you let me do what I need to do. That's why I can't be a hypocrite right now. What do you mean? We're going to do research in Africa, something you want to do. Don't say it isn't. Rick and I can see how much it means to you. So I want you to go. I want you to do whatever it is that lets you be you. I want you to do what you Wow. Who said that? Dad. I didn't know you were listening. <laughs> hey, that's a great picture, if I do say so myself. <laughs> oh, look, that, that's the heart, isn't it? Look, honey, you can yeah. see the heart. Look, you can see the chambers of it. Oh, that's incredible. <laughs> and there is the other little fellow's heart, you see? It's amazing, isn't it? Oh, yeah, it is amazing. It never ceases to amaze me. And there are both their spines, the brains. Man, everything is so clear. Indeed. Oh, both boys look perfect. And the placentas are in good shape. What do you mean, placentas? Margaret, in the books that you gave us, uh, uh, I read that identical twins share a placenta. Why should our boys have two? Well, that was a short conversation. You know me, I hate to hang on the phone. Well, still, it was Beth. Thought you two might talk for hours. Oh, absence in and of itself has made our hearts grow fonder. <laughs> no need to hang on the phone to prove anything. Well, no one's asking you to prove anything to anyone, darling. Okay, Aunt Helix. Uh, what is it that you want? I simply want to know how Beth and Lizzie are doing, that's all. Come on, since you've been here, you've hardly told me anything at all about them. I told you that they're fine. Well, really, Lil happens to say that Beth has the worst cold in history. Well, Beth is very tough, and nothing keeps her down for long. Mm-hmm. I know that, dear. That's why Lillian was hoping she might make a quick little visit here. Any chance of that? Nope. Lizzie starts camp next week. Beth doesn't want to disrupt her schedule. Well, what is it, sleepover camp, sleepaway or something? Or? I'm not sure which it is. Well, surely she could come on her own. Beth could be by herself. No, Beth has got all of her work at the reservation. 
Well, I'm sure she could take a long weekend. No, she can't. Have you even invited her? Of course I've invited her. Well, then maybe if I get on the telephone, maybe no, I can... don't get on... It's not going to change anything, on Alex. <laughs> if this is the way you deal with your wife, Lillian should be giving you the hard time, not Beth. How do you know that Lillian is giving Beth a hard time? <laughs> Come on, Lillian's my best friend. You were eavesdropping on my phone conversation <laughs> just now. You were eavesdropping on... Were you outside the door? Philip. Oh, your favorite little hideaway. I forgot. All right, I was listening. Well, wonders never cease. You're actually admitting it. Yes, and I'm absolutely not ashamed of it. Either. Really? No, because Why? I care about you and your family. You won't tell me, so I listen to find out for myself. Yeah, and you can't blame me either. I can't? No, I deserve something, Philip. You come back, you come back into our lives. At your after, personal invitation. After five years of totally neglecting uh, uh, all of us, me, your father, your brother, and at, well, quite at the resistance of your wife, too, you come back here and nestle into the bosom of your nestle? family. Nestle? I'm nestling? That's what I'm doing here? <sighs> Well, honestly, Philip, it, it, it's kind of uncomfortable. It's, it's, it's unnerving. You're sitting around waiting for something to happen, like one of us has done something. Why have you decided to stay? I missed my family. Is that so hard to believe? Well, if it's about missing your family, then why wouldn't you help me in trying to get some peace? No, 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 no. I refuse to be your henchman. That's not the same thing. No, no, no. You resisted helping me with Amanda when you knew you could see that she was leading Alan down a road to ruin. You refused to intercede with Alan and Alan Michael, knowing that it could affect Alan Michael's marriage. And you know what? As hard as I have tried to make you comfortable here, our relationship is really, at best, superficial. Okay. Maybe that's true. And I'm sorry. Let's fix it. Tonight, let's you and I go out to dinner together, just the two of us, okay? We'll catch up. Philip. What? Don't handle me. I'm not. It was an invitation, that's all. All I want is the simple truth. I... And if you don't tell me, I will get on the phone over there and I will call Beth. Okay. Leave my wife alone. She's not part of this. And what is this? Okay, Anna Alex. I'm going to tell you. But it's got to just stay between us, okay? I need a promise from you. You have it. Five years ago, you know I was set up by a man named Neil Everest for the Towers bombing. I know that, dear. Well, now it appears that he was paid by someone to do that. I'm here to find out who it was. And what if the Towers bombing was only the first act? What if this same someone that set me up has an encore plan for me? Oh, Philip, that's unthinkable. Yeah? You wanted to know. Yes, I did, and I'm glad you confided in me. No one should go through something like this alone. What are families for? <laughs> <laughs> Philip, come on, I'd be bitter, too, and if, if we'd known, I... Uh... Somebody knew. Do you have any idea who it is? I mean, somebody with a score to settle with you? What? Obviously. Well, what, an enemy? Some business rival? Or somebody's just plain jealous? Maybe all of the above. The only thing I know for sure is that they knew me very, very well. Someone very close. Mm -hmm. Very close. Oh, darling, surely you don't suspect your friends. I mean, not Rick. Closer. Closer? <laughs> someone in, in the family? I mean, that's what you're saying. Is someone in the family? They're a noisy group, aren't they? Yeah, they sure are enough to laugh. What about you, suppose? Oh, I don't know. I suppose one gull sings the other gull. What are those human beings doing down on our territory? Deep gull? <laughs> British gull? <huh? laughs> well, look at that. I think they heard you. <laughs> well, something must have made them go away. No, I think it just sent to some poor, unsuspecting fish. Oh, well, 
Bye bye, birdie. Hey, you know what? I got that CD on the yard. Oh, you are good. Oh, come on, only a gangplank away, sweetheart. Oh. Come on, come with me, Mr. Sporting. Let me play you my music. You really want to go, don't you? Only if you want to. Only if you want to continue this torrid honeymoon that was so rudely interrupted by the Sea Furies. Who are Dallas, by the way? I just want to make my bride happy. Well, what bride could refuse an offer like that? Mm. Come on, I just want to show you how much I love you. I'm you won't cast off? I promise you anything and everything. Really? Come on. Yeah, anything. Well, Margaret, I don't understand. If our boys are identical twins, why are there two placentas instead of one? I mean, is something wrong? Oh, no. No, no, no. Uh, while there is often only one placenta, the two is not uncommon. Oh, I didn't read that, did you, honey? Uh, well, anyway, it had me going. Everything is fine. Yeah. Everything's fine. Thank you, Margaret. Thank you. You know, we shouldn't <clears throat> take up any more of the doctor's time, okay? Well, actually, Blake, I'd like to... Something wrong? Oh, no. No, not to worry. I, um... I have to do an internal. It's just a routine procedure. You you could wait outside. Okay, okay, I'll, I'll be right out there. Okay. Thank you. I thought I wasn't scheduled for an internal for a couple of months. You aren't. It's the only excuse I could think of to get you alone. Blake, I am uncomfortable lying for you or anyone. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to get you caught up in all of this. <sighs> I'm so you. I mean. We both know that your twins are fraternal, right? I mean, with two fathers, they have to be. So how did Ross get the idea that the babies were identical? Well, Ross has read everything that you gave us, all the material. He's excited. Yes, yes, and very well informed. And I thought that meant that he was informed about everything. You haven't talked to him, have you? I know. I know I should. I, I, I will. I, I will. I just haven't. Not yet, at least. He's just so happy. Please stay with me a little longer. Oh, Blake, on this one, okay? You don't have to justify your thinking to me. In fact, the less I know about what's going on in your mind, the better. I wish I knew what was going on in my mind. Well, I know one thing. In a couple of months, no one's going to have to tell Ross anything because it's going to be as obvious to him as it is to everyone else that your boys are not identical. Well, not necessarily. I mean, all the newborns look alike. Oh, don't they? Blake. You haven't seen as many newborns as I have. I mean, some have light skin, some have dark skin, some are bald as a billiard ball, some have a full head of hair. And the minute any member of the family lays eyes on them, there's a chorus of, ooh, who does he look like? And the answer on one of them is not going to be Ross. <sighs> Trust me on this, Blake. If it's not obvious... If it's not obvious at birth, it soon will be. The boys will not look alike. Unless, of course, the other father is your husband's twin. <sighs> if only <he> were. <sighs> well, wishful thinking isn't going to change anything. Then I'm uncomfortable with his lying, so please don't put me in any more of these awkward situations. I'll try not to. No, you have to do better than try. Don't ask me to lie for you. I won't do it. I'm sorry. The, the last thing I wanted you to do was compromise your ethics. If it makes you happy, I'll, I'll go to another doctor. Oh, please, please. My happiness is not at issue here. I mean, and changing doctors won't change the facts. Your boys will not look alike. They might resemble each other because you're their mother. But with different fathers, they cannot be identical. Nothing short of a miracle could make that happen. All right, you keep this up, I'm going to change my mind. Well, you can ask my permission to go... I'm going to have to keep an eye on this one. <whistles> wow, it's a lot to ask. <laughs> Both of us. Uh, Michelle and I have an understanding, don't we, Michelle? Oh, yeah, sure. There's only... He's as bad as you are. There's only one rule. I'm the boss, and you do... Everything that I say, right? You know, you better ship up or I'll ship out on the next safari. Better still, I'll ship you out. Oh, yeah? Anyway. Hey, where are you going? Um, I promised Lily and I'd help her with the patient on five. This old man, his glasses are broken, so I'm going to read to him. I thought you hated this job, Michelle. I mean, 
You know, I thought you hated wearing this outfit. Yeah, I thought it was the worst punishment I possibly could have given you for the summer. I never said that, did I? I don't think so. Yeah. Who was that girl? I don't know. <laughs> She's changing every day. Your little girl is growing up, Dad. Huh. Don't worry, I will uh, write you and keep you updated. Well, I'll be hanging out near the mailbox. Damn. They have mailboxes out there? Yep. They do? Yep. They got phones, too, so use it. I will. You're so stupid. Yep. They got phones, too, so use it. I will. You're so stupid. <laughs> I mean, uh, it's not like we haven't spent a lot of time apart, you no, know. No, no, you're right. I mean, I did... I did spend those couple years in Chicago. So, this is gonna be exactly like that. I mean, no. this is no big deal. It's, no, no, it's, no, no, but I think I, I, I think I know why it's different this time, Dad. I, I know exactly why it's different. You've been eyeing that new car no, I got ever not, since I brought it it's home. It's not that. Oh. It's, it's not that. It's, it's different this time because... It's different this time because I, I know that no matter how many times I left Springfield, no matter where I went or for how long, I always knew that when I got back here, when I got back in Springfield, that you would be here, you would be at home. Been a lot of changes at home. Yeah, but I always knew that you would be there, that I could count on that one thing, that I could walk through that back door in the kitchen and I could see you sitting there at the table with the sports page scowling at it with a cold cup of coffee and then you'd look up and you'd catch me watching you what were you looking at that's what you always what? said what are you looking yeah. at son and did i forget to comb my hair this morning i said no dad the hair you have left looks great i just i'm just checking you out watching my dad Look at my face. It's like, you know, look at this mug. It's not going anyplace. And then I'd say, that's a good thing, Dad, because a lot of people around here need you. Especially me. You don't need me half as much as you think you do. Sons still need their father sometimes, Dad. I'll always be your father. And you're gonna make best father in the world one of these days. Yeah. Just not as soon as I thought, right? It'll happen. And when it does happen, your little guy is going to be terrifically lucky to have you. No man will ever be as lucky as I was, Dad. Brian. I'm proud of you. Dr. Bauer, Dr. Bauer? No. What's happening? The big family decision has been made. I'm leaving town. You did it, didn't you? You accepted that position in Africa? Yeah, I did, and I was able to do it. Because of him. So you're just going to pack up your pit helmet and leave me, is that it? Ross, I don't have a pit helmet. I'll give you mine. <laughs> I had this strange feeling. When I heard about this uh, appointment in Africa, it was a challenge you couldn't resist. I can't wait. I'm gonna miss you, my friend. Blake. Hi, honey. Hi. Oh, wow. Are you okay? What? What's the matter? Wait, 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 wait. Nobody, no, nobody move, okay? Just, just freeze. It's them. The babies. <laughs> they moved. <laughs> <laughs> you know, to think that someone I love so dearly would do such a dreadful thing to you, that's, that's almost too much to bear. Yeah, almost, but not quite, right? <laughs> Hey, I hope that I'm wrong, too. Well, what would it take to convince you of that? Some hard answers. Some dead ends. Because I'm not going to stop looking until I've gone through every lead that I have. And how, how far have you gotten this far? Not very. 
Well, if I'm if I'm to help you, there's some things I should well, know, I appreciate Philip, that, but... Alex. And I, you know what? I may ask you for your help later. Well, you'll have it. Be sure to that, darling. I mean, I'm not going to rest until this whole dreadful thing rests itself. You're taking this awfully hard. Well, how else can I take it, Philip? I... You and I have had our differences, but, you know, darling, I've always loved you. You, you do know that. Don't you? <laughs> oh, God. Darling, I forgot, but I, I do have a meeting. I've, I've got to go. Okay. You want me to drive? Uh, no, no, no. You have more important things to do right here. <laughs> By the way, do you know that you made me a little drawing like this one time? And I so cherished it. What's wrong with hers? Because the outfit, Frank, she had on wasn't one that she wanted you and Eleni to see her in. <sighs> Marcus, why didn't you come to us? Why didn't you tell us what was going on? I wanted to, but she wouldn't let me. She wasn't ready to see you guys. Look, when she was, I was going to drive her home. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> I'll take her home. I don't want to see you with her. Don't make another step toward her. Do you understand me? Unless the next time you decide to make a huge mess, stop. Frank, I wouldn't want me around either. Dahlia, look, you, you misunderstood me. Uh, you know, I, I understand more than you think. I mean, my mother's the whore, and I, I tried to do what she does. I, try, I tried to sell myself. Look, everything is going to be okay. We'll talk about this. We'll work it out. I don't think there's anything to talk about. I don't think you want that kind of influence on your little girl. Dahlia? I really want you to come back to the diner with me. And upset Eleni? About... You're not going to upset Eleni. Believe me, she's worried sick about you, just like I am. Yeah, well, after this, she's not going to want to have me around. I mean, she's always talking about how the diner is a family place. I, I just don't belong there. Listen to me. Please. You're a part of our family now. Eleni feels the same way. Well, after she finds out what I did, I don't think she's going to be able to look at me the same way. No, 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 you're wrong about that. She really is worried sick about you, and she still is. Please, please come back to the diner with me. Come home. secret and then you go running right to Alan Michael why so what do you think did a pretty good job didn't it that's gorgeous mm, and you know what I might be able to handle this after all Are you psychologically prepared for it <laughs> <laughs> I love you Mrs. Spalding say that again I love you no, the other part. Oh, Mrs. Alan Michael Spaulding? Ah, or you it. want me to be more PC and say Mrs. Lucy Cooper Spaulding? <laughs> mm -hmm. You give new meaning to the word anyway. Well, I'm proud of it. Yeah. You make me proud of it again. 
Go away. Go away, please. Mm -hmm. Anne Michael and Lucy, are you in there? Here. Alexandra? What? Oh, look, I had to come. Uh, is something wrong with, with the matter? <laughs> yes, darling, I need to talk to you. Uh, I guess that means a lot. No, 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 Lucy, you're part of this family. You and everything includes you. What are you so upset about, Alexandra? This family is falling apart, and there is not a thing I can oh. do to stop it. No, I want you to try. <laughs> look, Alan Michael, for the sake of this entire family, please give your father another chance. No! No way in hell! I can't feel anything. Oh, there it goes again. <laughs> well, why can't I feel the babies? Well, you, you know, you're not going to be able to feel anything on the outside, Ross, but uh, Blake is feeling everything from the inside. Oh, well, that's okay. There's nothing wrong. You, you did do the follow-up sonogram, right, Blake? Oh, yeah. No, sure. Everything's fine. It's right. I'm, oh, gosh, there they go again. It's so great. So when am I going to be able Ross, to feel the babies? In a month, you're going to feel everything. Okay. Hmm. They'll be here any minute. Oh, I can't wait, Doc. I'm just sorry I'll miss it. Hmm? What, what do you mean? Well, honey, my best friend has accepted an appointment in Africa. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm leaving town, and I am leaving your two sons. And, and my son, who is going to make the best godfather those little fellows could have. You're upset with your father for now, justifiably so, but given some time, Alan. Alexandra, I can be just as upset with you if you keep it up. Lucy, will you talk to him? You tell him. I mean it, Alexandra. Any more about this, or I'm going to throw you overboard. He doesn't mean that. Yes, yes I do. He I does. don't want to hear another word about my right, father. Your father needs you. Oh, that's a lot of bull, Alexandra. Okay, he needs Amanda and he needs Philip. And I am trying to tell you that as far as your father is concerned, Amanda is out of the picture. She's not in the ballgame. Yes, but not Golden Boy. Not the prodigal son. He couldn't have picked a better time to come back. I bet Dad's beside himself. Oh, come on. You're letting past, past experiences cloud your judgment oh. here. Now, so you've always felt second best to your brother. Uh -huh. Well, get over it. You're a grown man, Alan Michael. For heaven's sake, put those feelings aside. I can't. Better yet, just throw those over. I can't and I won't. Well, no. My life started when Philip was sent away. I wish he never came back. <laughs> <laughs> 